Welcome to another episode of Business as Unusual. I'm Ingrid Pika, and we want to be covering all kinds of topics so that you can help your work-life balance and so that you can truly succeed in your business and your life. So today I have a very special star guest. It is Tim Hoyman. He is actually the Mozart of real estate. Tim, welcome. Well, thank you, Ingrid. Awesome. So uh, well, Tim and I have known each other for many years and, and it just attests to how wonderful it is to, to have communication and connect with people because that's how relationships build. I still remember meeting you, Tim. Oh boy, it was at a bird shop or so. We just started talking and <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it was on South Broadway. I remember yes, it well. Here in Denver. Mm -hmm. So, well, we have certainly had some interesting times here. And I know many people are a little trepidatious about their homes and sale if they're in transition. Do they want to sell? Should they sell? So I wanted to bring you on today to have that conversation and, and just kind of overview a little bit of what the real estate market is doing right now and what some thought processes would be for some, some people as they're, as they're going through the economic crisis right now. So um, when somebody says that this may not be the right time to buy or sell a house, what are your thoughts on that, Tim? Well, a, a couple of things. First of all, I went back and contrasted and compared the marketplace in 2008 and 2009 when we had the recession and basically the end of 2019. And mm -hmm. the numbers were remarkable. Back then in 29, um, according to what I pulled up, the average sales price was about 250. Uh, now, uh, at the end of 2019, we're at 462. So there's been a, a large increase in price. But there's a couple of differences between then and now. We had a housing bubble then, and I'm convinced that we do not have a housing bubble now for two reasons, primarily. The first one is people have equity in their homes. And back in 2008 and 2009, people were refinancing and refinancing and refinancing. We don't have that anymore. We have a lot of equity in the Denver marketplace right now. So there's the ability for people, if they are in trouble, they can reasonably sell and not go down the short sale route. The other reason and the primary reason is supply and demand. Our inventory is extremely low. So in 2010, that was our peak. We were at 21,874 active listings on average per month. Uh, in 2019, we're, we were at 7,500 average active listings. So it's about a third. And then um, we had uh, days on market in 2010, we were around 200 days, which puts that in the buyer's market range. Um, the average monthly uh, days on market for 2019 was 48 days. And we're actually selling more homes today than we were then. So we're a third in inventory and more homes are being sold every month. That portends very, very well for the Denver market. Fantastic. So speaking of the Denver market, and, and I know you're licensed in Colorado, uh, some of these concepts you're talking about do relay across the nation, some do not. But what are your comments on if someone's wanting or thinking of, of moving interstate? Well, it's, it's, it depends upon the states you're moving to. And I have a nationwide network of really good realtors who are trained to really serve their, uh, their clients. And I'm more than happy to hook anyone up with anybody out of state, or if it's Grand Junction or Pueblo or Colorado Springs, I have connections there as well. But uh, so people understand, uh, Forbes magazine came out and a couple of other places are pretty much saying the same thing. And that is, is that we have a housing shortage of about four and a half million homes nationwide. Certainly in Denver, we do have a housing shortage as well. Um, just look at the number of inventory we have. That's, that's a big number. That's a big yes. number. So you just alluded to you have such a large network. Mm -hmm. When we're having some challenging times, whether it's because we can't move around because of uh, a, a, a shutdown, national global shutdown, or perhaps even in other circumstances where it, you may not have the opportunity to reach out to everyone all the time. So basically, Tim, and I know you're a master of this, we alluded to how we met and so, but how do you stay connected with your clients, with your network, with 
buyer sellers. What is your what are your tricks there? Well, first of all, the the best thing you can possibly do is pick up the phone and call. And the first question that I ask people are, "How are you doing?" And I just let people talk, and they tell me exactly how they're doing. And I listen for pleasure or pain, and I try to solve issues with pain, or I celebrate with them their pleasure. It's all about them, and it's not about me. Secondly, I write、uh, two personal notes every single workday to people.、Um, just, I'm thinking of you. How are you? If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. And as you know, Ingrid, when I when I make that statement, I'm not talking about real estate.、No. I've told I went through my database of everybody that I know is over 60, and I called them and said, "Hey, if you need something at the grocery store, call me." And I have folks that live on the north end of town. It'd be a 45 minute drive. I do it in a second for them. And and that's that's what community is. That's what America is built on. Is that、right. true? People like you. That want to give and, and communicate, and that that I think we we found those things that are successful in, in our businesses and they're continuing to grow. That that's a core part of success is building and maintaining, and that's the key word is maintaining those relationships so that people think of you and they 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 trust you. It's really about trust that develops through the relationships. And Tim, you do a beautiful job with that. So, what what do you think? In some of the challenges that may be going on now, or even sometimes that we may encounter in the future, Tim, what are some of the most important components in keeping a business going? Well, I think the the most important component is、uh, to see what you have done in the past. I would write down three to five things that you've done in the past to create your business. What three to five things are you doing today? Uh, through through this、uh, shutdown to、uh, keep your pipeline going, and then contrast and compare those and figure out what you're going to do in the future. And with me, I've really just added one or two things.、Um, I've made more of an emphasis on、uh, LinkedIn and social media, but I'm doing the same stuff. So I actually added with what I have been doing, and I can do that because I can't go out and look at homes. Now on today, Monday, we can.、Uh, so now my time is to go back out, look at homes, preview for people, and really focus on、uh, the clients that I have that are now that have been waiting anxiously to get going. So it sounds like there's a lot of just、uh, learn and grow and evolving with what is around us and what are our resources. Right, nicely done. You are a master of that. Well, thank you.、Yeah. And the one other thing I can say is, you really got to keep a positive attitude because what you focus on expands. That that's for sure, absolutely. So, Tim, if someone has additional questions regarding real estate and even how to connect as a business, how would they reach you?、Uh, you're welcome to call me at three zero three six six nine two six seven six. Or you can email me at t hoyman at d e n one zero zero dot com. Hoyman is h o y m a n. Yes, ma'am.、So, wonderful, Tim. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you. And we appreciate you joining us on another episode of the business as unusual. Because if you stay stagnant, so will your business. So, can't think of unique ways to make yourself grow and to let yourself be seen and and be out there. For those that you can serve, if you have any other questions, you're also welcome to reach out to me. Again, I'm Ingrid. You can reach me at Ingrid at IngridPika.com. That's P-Y-K-A. And definitely, please subscribe so that we can continue to build your business through additional growth tips and business tips and time management tips, all kinds of things to help you succeed. Thanks for joining.